very briefly, we will demonstrate the upload action configuration and uh, by its means, we will be presenting sending a payment file from Nesbit to Access Space Server. The upload action configuration is very simple. Uh, we have to uh, provide a name for our connection, uh, pre-select pre the, uh, the connection itself. Of course, we'll have to state the directory towards which uh, our files are going to be directed, and then the file source. So at this moment, as set, we'll be uh, demonstrating sending a payment file from the payment file administration of NetSuite, practically the payments module. There's also one additional possibility to simply um, perform an upload of files stored in the file cabinet to the dedicated remote server. Again, this option is uh, entirely optional, but an end user, um, again, can choose to either encrypt, sign uh, when, uh, a payment file when considering the PGP options, uh, but yeah, multiple, multiple flavors are possible. To proceed with the actual demonstration of the payment file, we'll navigate to the payments module of NetSuite. That would be payments, payment processing, and the payment file administration. In our scenario, um, we will be sending payment number 20. And at this moment, please note from an end user perspective, this step is very, very simple. An end user will have to only press the button upload EFT patch, and in this manner, the payment uh, will be transmitted to, to the dedicated remote server. Now we'll proceed with this, uh, with this option. One more item to mention uh, is that uh, besides the upload action configuration, there is also a workflow responsible for this transmission uh, option. And during implementations, we practically create a very simple workflow uh, with uh, users, but we do encourage them to use the full capabilities of NetSuite in terms of payment validation or permissions, uh, permission access. So as an example, the upload um, patch button or the re-upload patch can be practically uh, limited to particular users. As an example, a user holding a uh, holding a role of the um, AP clerk or practically an, uh, an administrator. And also one additional item, as simply said previously, uh, using Access Pay as an intermediary to practically process uh, payments fully eliminates the need to um, create a template file inside Nesbit. So practically an end user or an administrator can, uh, can generate a payment file using the, the templates inside Nesbit and uh, Access Pay on their end are going to manipulate it to practically meet the bank requirements. This very moment, I'm going to hand over to Nat to uh, to simply showcase the the payment received. So yeah, great. Thank, thanks for that, Anita. So now that the payment file has been delivered to Access Pay, um, within Access Pay, I can set up an email notification to alert me that there is a payment file waiting to be processed. So I'm here at the login page of Access Pay's payment platform, also known as UPP, which stands for Unified Payments Platform. So what I'll do now is I'll log in using my own user credentials. This will then take me to the submissions page of UPP. I can then filter to see what's come in today. And great, so I can see um, a file came in um, a minute ago, which was sent by Anita with one transaction in, and the file is at a status ready to approve. So whichever user has um, approval user permissions can come into here and hit this red button here. This will then take me to, to, to this page where I can see um, the file journey has begun. So you can see in the background, the file has been imported, routed and validated. And of course, we can add these as manual steps to your workflow um, if you want to as well. If we scroll a little bit further down, I can see there's one transaction um, within that file. Um, it's got an amount of 14,520 euros and you can see the source and destination there as well. If everything looks okay and I'm happy to kind of send this payment instruction off to the bank, what I can do is leave a little comment here in the comment section saying looks good. And this will be logged for audit purposes as well. And then all I have to do is hit approve and this payment instruction will get sent directly to the bank. And it's really as simple as that. Um, it's, it's really important to remember that access pay is, is completely configurable. So of course you can add additional levels of approval within this workflow, or you can go the other way and have a complete lights out straight through process if you wanted to. So I'm sure kind of what you're thinking, um, you know, what, what you've seen is, is very, very simple and straightforward. And it, and it certainly is for a user, but there's a lot going on underneath the bonnet. So once Access Pay receive the payment files, um, we carry out enrichment of the file, validation, and transform the file into a bank ready file format. 
and basically take all that stress away and um, stress and IT resource away from the client. So you can kind of think of it a bit like an iPhone. You know, you have your phone, you put your pin code in, you head to the camera to take a photo or you go to Instagram to check your Instagram. It's super user friendly, but there's a lot of complex technology going on behind the scenes to make it user friendly. And that's very similar to Access Pay. Um, and just to kind of give you a real life example, we have a large client um, banking with Nordea. The file formats that the Nordic banks require are very specific. So prior to Access Pay, this client had file format and connectivity issues. Um, but then using Access Pay, we handled the, the file transformation piece. So the file would be accepted by Nordea. Um, and of course, work with Nordea to build that direct connection to the bank, adhering to all those security protocols um, set by Nordea. Um, so kind of going back to this, um, this file journey, which, which, which we were on before, um, so the payment instruction has now been delivered to the bank um, and the money will be exchanged. But as Tom explained earlier, here at Access Pay, we have a, a cash visibility tool to complete that full cycle. Um, so we know most treasurers are, are currently manually logging into their banking portals each day, downloading their end of day bank statements and sticking those into some sort of internally managed spreadsheet to work out balances um, or maybe sticking those statements into some sort of reconciliation tool. However, with Access Pay, we can help automate those processes and we will instruct your banks to send your end of day or intraday statements and we can convert those statements into a format your ERP or reconciliation tool will, will consume um, and slash or <laughs> deliver those statements back to you. Um, or, or we can kind of show that within our cash management tool, um, which I'm going to show you now as well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll head to our cash management platform, which hopefully you can see. Um, we're in the admin page here. If I go to statements upload, and what I'm going to do is manually upload a statement. Um, and just to, just to note, you don't have to do this. The, the kind of the, the statement delivery will be automated from your banks into Access Pay. But just for um, demo purposes, I'm going to up manually upload an end of day statement. So if we do that and upload a file for yesterday. We've got an end of day statement there. Hit upload. Great. You can see it's been a success. Um, within the cash management platform, you'll see lots of tabs at the top. So there's lots of functionality which you can utilize. If we jump into balances, this is kind of the primary page to see your, your balances. So at the moment, we're showing it on a currency level. And you can hover over and see your balances. You can also flick into um, to see this on a on a bank level as well, and to see your show to see your balances, all you have to do is click this drop down button here, and you can basically see your opening balance, your current balance, and a forecasted balance if you wish to upload one. Um, now we're showing your balances across all your um, all your banks at the moment, but if you can see the filter button there, you can get quite granular, and you can filter by currency, bank account, legal entity, um, tags. So we have a tagging feature so you can group together similar accounts um, and assign them a tag. And then you can use those tags um, for reporting purposes or if you want to see the, the, the balance across those particular accounts, you can use it here as well. Um, and a lot of clients come to us and will have deposit accounts or investments accounts. And this is a kind of a great use case um, for, for, for the tags. If we jump into statements, um, statements you know, does exactly what it says on the tin. We've got... Um, your bank accounts, which are set up here. Again, if I jump into Barclays, I can see I've got five accounts within Barclays. If I go onto Nav's Barclays account, I can see the most recent statement data, which has fed into my particular account. So I can see um, on the 22nd of May, there was a statement with five transactions, and that's the one that I just uploaded a bit earlier on. If I click into that, I can see um, some account details and then the ins and outs, the debits and credits. Um, from here, I can download the statement information into a CSV or into a PDF as well. So if I just click on the PDF, hopefully you should be able to see this. That spits out a, a nice PDF um, of your statement as well. Great. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we can also deliver statements directly back to the client to be consumed by, by your ERP or reconciliation tool. 
um, as well as showing it here within our cash management tool. So I actually scheduled a statement to be delivered back to NetSuite before the call. So that statement should now have landed back in NetSuite so a full reconciliation can take place. Um, so I'll pass it back um, to Anita now. Thank you very much, Nav. Um, so at this moment, we are again uh, back to uh, NetSuite, uh, and in this walkthrough, we'll be showcasing the pool operation, practically pulling statements from the access space server, uh, store them in the file cabinet, and also auto process them for reconciliation. The configuration responsible for this operation uh, is practically the download action configuration. And when considering the download action configuration, please note the setup is much more even simpler uh, because there are no workflows that are practically running behind scenes. Um, again, very briefly, we do provide uh, a name for our configuration. We'll pre-select the connection. And then of course, we state the directory from which we will be pulling statements inside NetSuite. As well, under the section remote files, you can notice that we do expose all the files that are now available on the access space server to practically be downloaded uh, in NetSuite. Under the naming pattern, I have pre-selected um, a user preference. We can call it that way so that we can only download one file that holds a particular naming convention. That means that practically if I do have a file on the remote server holding this name, NetSuite will only download uh, this particular file, and that is the uh, file at the very top of our uh, backlog displayed in red. Moreover, these statements are going to be uh, stored into a particular folder in the file cabinet. Uh, we'll get to the file cabinet setup in a, in a moment. And just very briefly to mention, we can as well initiate a remote action for the downloaded file, meaning that we can either delete the remote file or simply move it to a different directory. At this very moment, uh, before we proceed to the file cabinet, I will press the button download file so that practically our statement file can be successfully downloaded. Moving to the file cabinet. Please note that for this operation to be successfully uh, uh, processed, uh, two, uh, two folders are needed and practically these folders do have to be on the very same level. We do have an unprocessed folder and a processed one. The reason for this uh, process is just because there are two scripts that are practically responsible to auto-process the main statements. The very first one is practically moving the file from the unprocessed to the process folder. And in this operation, uh, the system is practically parsing the file, meaning it is connecting the bank statement data with the correct bank GL account of NetSuite. And once the statement is part, parsed, the very last script is practically converting the payment file into an actual statement. Now, the idea of the unprocessed folder is to always be empty, meaning that it will be awaiting for new bank statements uh, coming in in the, in the morning. So when our operation is completed, we can now go ahead and open the unprocessed folder and you can notice that our file has been already downloaded. When the first script is actually performed, the system practically creates an auto input record, which at this moment hasn't been processed yet. So we'll now go ahead and, uh, and uh, perform the auto processing operation. But before we, we do this, I would like to introduce you to one additional menu um, and that is menu under transactions and then bank reconciliation, which practically stands for the zone reconcile application. With this application, we can practically uh, reconcile bank statements incoming from the, from the file cabinet. For a moment, I'll open the statements to process in a, uh, in a separate uh, tab. We can notice that in this list, we have 96 records in total, and we will be now uh, performing the, the execution and practically auto-posting the statement. We we'll hit save and execute, um, and just simply await our results. At this very moment, you can notice that these steps are pretty manual, uh, downloading the statements, parsing the statements, as well as auto-processing the statements from the file cabinet. But please note that this is indeed the preferred option when considering the testing cycle. Uh, in a real life scenario, especially the production in instances, uh, the scripts can be scheduled and all these operations are practically going to be, uh, to be flow as, um, as expected. From an end user perspective, indeed, an end user will have to navigate to transactions, bank reconciliation and statements to process. Our list is already here. We will only wait by the time the script is, um, the script is executed.
there is actually a difference uh, between the two menus of bank statement list and bank statements to process. Uh, practically, the bank statement list is storing a list of all previously imported statements, so practically acts as a repository of, of historical statements. In the statement to process list, this list ideally should be empty, so that would mean that the users have reconciled all the, all the pending open banking statements. When the process is completed, we'll go ahead and reload the page. We would be uh, expecting our bank statement coming in, which is practically true in, in our case. You can notice the bank account is successfully uh, stored, but uh, yeah, this is indeed a user preference depending on the chart of accounts of an end user. At this moment, we'll proceed with editing the bank statement, and you can see the, the actual converted statement from a file incoming from the file cabinet. The bank statement is practically parsed into, uh, into two sections. The header section, which is uh, practically displaying data of our bank balances, and uh, the below transactions are practically the movements, the movements of our statement. <laughs> 